While the mainstream media and large parts of the crypto space are completely distracted by ETH's merge to proof of stake, if you objectively look at both Vassal and the merge, it's clear the real innovation is occurring in Cardano. Other than moving to an inferior version of proof of stake, with lock staking and slashing, the merge doesn't solve the gas fees or improve scalability. On the contrary, Cardano's Vassal upgrade improves throughput, scalability, speed and the developer experience, whilst already delivering the best-in-class staking solution, blockchain wired. However, although the media coverage seemingly doesn't want to address this, the impact of Vassal and the merge isn't going to be determined by what makes the headlines today. The impact of these two events is going to be solely determined by the technology itself, and in this respect, there really is no comparison. Welcome back for today's installment of Cardano Insights, where we track the all-important developments at the very pulse of Cardano and its ecosystem each weekday. So let's get straight into it. First up today, and to something I'll make a running theme in these videos all the way to mainnet, let's briefly run through all the progress relating to Vassal and check out a great update just released by OG this evening. So checking in at portal.io, here you can see nodes reporting version 1.35.3 are now at 55%, and importantly, 42% of blocks are now being produced on the latest version, so this is real steady progress, well on the way to meeting that 75% marker. Here IOG provided this thread with more details relating to the rollout status, so in terms of bugs, great news, no new bugs found today, there are no severity 1 to 3 bugs at all, and a total of 9 severity 4 or 5 bugs, considered minor, currently outstanding in backlog, but most importantly, no hard fault blockers. In terms of exchanges, there's one last small piece of work to do relating to Cardano wallet configs and Nick's Docker setup before exchanges have all they need to integrate, so we can expect more news on this within the next few working days. Binance, however, in terms of their state pools, have announced they are now updating their Cardano nodes. For Cardano dApps, 4 out of the top 10 by TBL have so far confirmed they're actively testing against node 1.35.3 on the pre-production testnet. More updates to follow. Last but not least, they write, we're just finishing off an updated web page for you so you can follow some of the key info and metrics in this thread in one place as we get ever closer to the Vassal upgrade. Stay tuned tomorrow. So a real positive update there from IOG, and we'll definitely be tracking the status of all the readiness criteria as further progress is made. If you haven't seen it already, I've linked the full thread in the description below. Now with all the excitement surrounding the lead up to Vassal going live, sometimes we can all be a little guilty of getting caught up in thinking far more about the event taking place itself, rather than the actual impact and significance this upgrade is going to have on both the average user of the blockchain and those building on it. When you drill down into an example of what the new capabilities of Vassal will bring to a specific Cardano project, it really helps to visualise the wider impact this upgrade is going to have on our ecosystem. We all know we're getting reference inputs, inline datums, reference scripts, collateral outputs and diffusion pipelining, and we've gone through in some detail what this all means in theory in a previous video, but what about the effects of these new capabilities in practice? In this article published earlier today on Essential Cardano, we get a great insight from a developer's perspective on the key takeaways surrounding the process of upgrading an existing protocol to Vassal, and importantly, the staggering effects this upgrade is going to have on both the users and developers of this platform. So let's dive into the article. Authored by the co-founder of Artano, which is a community-driven NFT marketplace that specializes in one-on-one -on -one NFT art pieces, here they start by explaining, Cardano is approaching its major upgrade to Vassal functionality. Like many other projects, Artano is in the process of upgrading both the platform and smart contract functionality to benefit from increased robustness cost efficiency and scalability. Over the past few months we've been testing Plutus version 2 scripts and new Cardano improvement proposals that will be introduced with the Vassal upgrade. In this post we share the key development takeaways we've learned while upgrading the platform and preparing it for a smooth transition to Vassal on mainnet. So they go on to provide some details on the current state, writing Cardano is running on Alonzo mainnet, smart contract functionality introduced in September 2021. Vassal, which will bring significant performance and capability enhancements to Cardano, introduces a new development era, referred to as Babbage. Upgrading decentralized applications to be compatible with Babbage functionality might not be as straightforward as it seems at first glance. Upgrades introduce new ledger capabilities, and this means that platforms, projects, and applications also need to adjust and prepare for such changes. Artano runs on a Cardano node at its core, 
In the process of upgrading to Vassal, we needed to upgrade from node version 1.34.1 to version 1.35.3, which is the recommended version for mainnet hard fork. The platform also depends on Cardano API rather than the Cardano CLI for the backend processing, and this requires a number of changes. So they continue to lay out the three phases that will lead to the new Vassal capabilities actually taking effect. Phase one, upgrading the components and maintaining compatibility. So they write, in preparation for the hard fork, both the Cardano node and the CLI need to be upgraded to the recommended versions of the node 1.35.3. This comes with a number of changes required for Plutus contract support. An important thing for dApps to note is that when migrating from Plutus version 1 scripts to Plutus version 2 scripts, the source code, when recompiled, will not have the same script hash and address as compiled in the version 1 script. Using the exact same script with different language versions will result in different hashes. For a marketplace like ours, it is important to ensure that the NFTs that were put on sale before the node upgrade can still be purchased after the upgrade. This implies that the correct contract address and redeemers are used in buying and withdrawing the NFTs. So they go on to outline phase two, establishing compatibility with Plutus version one contracts. So after the hard fork, the era will change to Babbage and the scripts that still reference the Alonzo era will not work anymore. Therefore, it is crucial to update the scripts to use proper era parameters and data structures, which will also enable the trade and withdrawal of NFTs that were put on sale before the hard fork. And finally, phase three, beyond the hard fork, Here's where they provide a real insight to the incredible effects Vassal is going to have specifically on the Artano platform. They write, once the ledger is hard forked to Vassal functionality and the transition is complete, we can finally upgrade the contracts to support such Vassal capabilities as inline datums, reference scripts and reference inputs. The benefits of these new capabilities would differ depending on the use case. For Artano, Vassal features provide significant benefits in reducing the transaction size and market operation fees for example, the fees surrounding NFT buying and bidding. The table below summarizes the improvements and they're pretty outstanding to say the least. As you can see here in the Alonzo era, transaction fee for a direct NFT sale is currently 1.6 ADA with a transaction size of 6,573 buyers. With the Plutus version two capabilities, they will see a reduction in the transaction fee of more than 75% to 0.39 ADA, with the transaction size reducing by 92% to 481 bytes. In terms of their NFT auctions, the Alonzo era transaction fee is currently 1.7 ADA, with a transaction size of 7,885 bytes. With the Plutus version two capabilities, they will also see a reduction in transaction fee of more than 75% to 0.39 ADA, with the transaction size also reducing by 92% to 570 bytes. The results displayed in this table for the Alonzo era are taken from the currently deployed mainnet using node version 1.34.1. The results shown for the Babbage era, where we see these great reductions, are taken from testing Vassal functionality on the preview testnet using the node version 1.35.3, the latest release. So I thought this was a pretty interesting insight. Whilst this is specific to Artano, it provides a great deal of perspective surrounding just how significant the impact of Vassal is going to be. With such a sizable reduction to both the transaction fee and size, this will greatly improve the user experience from both a cost and speed perspective when interacting with their marketplace. But of course, these new capabilities are not specific to Artano. As you know, dApps across the entire ecosystem have also been testing the new Plutus version 2 scripts for months now, integrating within their dApps, and we're sure to see similar results across the number of NFT marketplaces, DEXs and DeFi protocols already deployed in addition to the platform soon to be launching in the Cardano ecosystem. As users of the Cardano blockchain, we have so many great improvements to the user experience in store for us in the months ahead. This was just one example of the positive effects one project has realized in utilizing the new capabilities. I'll be sure to cover more Cardano projects and really drill down specifically what Vassal has improved from protocol to protocol over the coming weeks. This way we can track the impact of Vassal in real time. It's funny, the media is so distracted with their coverage of the merge, they're completely missing just how powerful Vassal will prove to be in shaping and progressing the Cardano ecosystem. 
So that's it for today's installment of Cardano Insights, as we keep track of all the developments and continue to spread those positive Cardano vibes. If you found value in the content, then please be sure to comment, share, like, and subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate all the support. We'll be back tomorrow with your daily roundup. Until then, thanks for watching, have a great day, and as always, keep it Cardano.